This is the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz, presented by Gate City Bank and brought to you by Pepsi. Saturday afternoon at the Unidome, the Herd makes history not only seven in a row over Northern Iowa for North Dakota State football, but for the first time in UNI's Division I era, the Panthers lose to the same opponent three consecutive times at home. And with that, we welcome you in. It is the Bison Football Show. Jeff Colhane here with the head coach, Matt Entz, a 23-20 win for the Herd. Coach, congratulations on the win. I know you guys were just excited to have a chance to play a football game again, and they got the job done in this one. Yeah, they were. Um, every day, a little more excitement. As today unfolded, I think as we got closer and closer, a little more excitement. Unfortunately, you never were able just to cut it loose because it wasn't a 100% mm -hmm. sure thing that we were going to play. We've, we've been there before. We've seen that uh, rug pulled out yeah. from underneath us a couple weeks ago, and so I, I it, it took a little time to get us rolling today, and uh, but anytime you can get a win over you and I is a, is a good positive thing. Yep. You and I talked in the pregame about this, but what are some of your biggest concerns, things you were watching for, especially early in the game, and what jumped out at you about how your team played? Well, execution as always. Um, you know, we've been at practice for a, a couple weeks now straight. Uh, you saw it early, third downs, just not executing it like we needed to, keeping the quarterback in the pocket. Um, you know, you try to emulate it at practice, but it's hard to emulate speed. I mean, there's a reason why he's a starting quarterback yeah. and why our scout team guy is a scout team player. Yeah. Um, penalties that you can't control, um, little things like that. Details, discipline are things you, you felt like it was almost game one again. Yeah, and you go through the first half of play. You really wanted to get your offense going, I know. The last time we played, they were outstanding against yep. UND, ran the football well. Well, we just really didn't have the ball that long in the first half. Tough to shake off the rust when you don't have a lot of plays out there. Right. Yeah, the first series was five snaps. We got a first down, which was critical. We, 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 we extended the drive a little bit. Second series was 15 or 14 snaps, uh, a long bison-type drive. And we, we come away with no points. And then we have the huge return by Christian. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not out on the field. And then we do get the ball back. We move the ball in a two-minute scenario. We get it down, and we do get a field goal at the end of the half. But I think we had 20 snaps in the first half. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to have that continuity, especially when you want game experience and, and game-like situations. What did you make of your defense in the first half, especially in the red zone, holding them to two field goals? Well, that was good. I mean, it, positive, mm -hmm. that part. I still go back to the third down. They were they were five of fourteen on the day, and if four of those four of those five weren't in the first half, or I'd be surprised. Yeah. And we just we they you saw them play kind of a four corners type game early. They let the play clock get all the way down. They weren't looking to run a lot of snaps. They were taking their time. They knew their one of their best defense was to keep our our mm -hmm. offense off the field. And, you know, they did a good job in the first half. Yep, Christian Watson, a star in this game and in, for, in the first half for NDSU. A 100-yard kickoff return for a score, a 61-yard reception as well in the second quarter that led to a Bison field goal. Let's throw it to our first half highlights. Cooks kickoff, end over end, Watson from the goal line. Now he's sprinting, middle, sprinting right, looking for an alley, 25, 30, he has it. Watson in the open field, across midfield, a foot race, 30, 20, 10, trot in there, baby! Touchdown, Christian Watson from 100 yards out to the house. Special teams in a tight game making big plays. Nolan, good pocket, fires it down the middle. What a catch by Watson. Midfield, to the outside. There goes Christian, a foot race, 30, 20, and knocked out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Oh, baby, just like that. Snap, spot, kick, end 
over end, plenty of leg. It is good to end the half. A career long field goal for Jake Reinholtz of 42 yards. Let's throw to our first half scoreboard and stats brought to you by Nodak Insurance Company. And you know, I know the offense, again, not on the field very long, time of possession in favor of Northern Iowa. But man, Christian Watson was, was a dude for you in the second quarter late, especially. He, well, he had a, a, a tremendous kickoff return. Uh, coach Pauly uh, is our lead coach on that, does a great job. I think our fans and us, we've all seen the shoelace tackle, the near misses on these explosive plays. And today we were able to get everyone blocked up. We got everyone covered uh, on our returns scheme and they do a good job on special teams. So for us to be able to take advantage of it was critical. And then with about, what was it? Maybe a minute and a half left or so in the, in the we had a whole shot. We cleared them out with a vertical. And then we hit another vertical kind of following right behind number three. Uh, Zeb did a great job of putting it on him. Uh, and then Christian, you know, as fast a kid is, can, can eliminate angles and, and got it down in the red zone for us. Yep. Stay with us. More to come on the Bison Football Show. This is Coach's Corner, presented by Gate City Bank. We're running nine slant. Right? You're backing up. You're coming out. When you get to the 30, I want you to force it to your outside. You guys will make sure to force hard to the outside, either square them up or ride them out. Here we go. Yes. Good, try to get our hands inside. Sit. Just anticipate we're levering, right? Good hands, good hands. Now when you lean there, bring your feet with you. Right, that's the thing he talks about when you're extending, bring your feet. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, grab one, me included. This is Coach's Corner, presented by Gate City Bank. Welcome back to the Bison Football Show. NDSU at the half, leading 10 to 6. Halftime message to your guys in this game today. Well, for the lack of plays that we had offensively, the lack of consistency on third down, we, we were winning. Mm -hmm. It was 10 to 6. So part of me wanted to go in there and and fire and brimstone. And part of me, just let's just keep being who we are. and and eliminate some of the errors and eliminate some of the, the issues that we're having. Yeah. And you saw that as we came out in the second half, you know, we did better on third down defensively. We put some drives together. We started to, to run the football effectively. And uh, you just wish, as a coach, you always wanted to start faster, sooner in the course of a game. Seemed like they were playing with fire with field position in that third quarter. And finally, we made them pay. That was a little bit of a trick play for us, <laughs> uh, something that they should have gave up a touchdown against Western Illinois. Okay. Same formation. Okay. You did, if you're not stealing, you're not trying in Coaches, college football. There you go. Film work. And, there you, uh, go. you know, what we did is if you saw, we had a tackle extended. So it looked like trips. But of course, because you're ineligible with your number, yep. but they covered him down. And all of a sudden on the backside, we had a tight end that leaked out. Wow. They even were pointing at him, but nobody wanted to cover him. <laughs> so, you know, it was a shoelace catch, finishing the end zone. Uh, but that's, that's why you, you watch all that film. That's why all the preparation's critical. It's a 17-12 game in the fourth quarter. And we're commenting during our broadcast saying, this is where we need a bison drive right here. You got it. 12 plays, yep. 71 yards, took seven minutes off the clock. You ran it 11 of 12 plays, and Hunter Lupke uh, got paid off in the end for a touchdown run. We did. We started to lean on him up front on the offensive line, and uh, positive. Another another long drive, a bison-like drive. Uh, we, need to, we need to get more used to having those and have them more frequently. Uh, I think our fans and myself would agree there. Three defensive guys I wanted to highlight with you. James Kayser, 13 tackles. Eli Mostart, seven tackles, three TFLs, two sacks. Braden Thomas made big plays in that yep. third quarter for you as well. Well, James, you know, the, the new Jimmy football. Uh -huh. You know, it, it's just been around the game his whole life. Dad was a high school coach, had a huge family has multiple brothers that have gone on and played at the college level. His sister is involved in our recruiting department. And so, I mean, it, 
they, they know football, yeah. and he knows football. Uh, he could play multiple positions. I've said it before, if I could get 10 of those kids, I would take him. Mm -hmm. He's really good. Uh, Eli Mostart, you know, a freshman for us, uh, played you know, as, good as, as good as you expect. Mm -hmm. They're probably even better. Uh, seldom do you have a guy who can come in and compete like that as a freshman in the Missouri Valley. And Braden is one of those uh, you know, transfers that we were able to pick up that semester, Division II kid that had a chip on his shoulder and wanted to play hard. Yep, 23-20 the final. We got the hands team involved late, executing special teams down the stretch. Let's take a look at our second half highlights. Third down, trips to the left side. McIlvain in the gun, takes the snap, pocket collapsing. He's grabbed, he's sacked, he's not gonna get away that time. Braden Thomas, a sack attack right there from 98. Empty backfield. Nolan lofts it down the middle, wide open, caught, what a catch! Babbage, get in there, Babbage! It's a touchdown for Josh Babbage! A broken defensive play. Babbage was wide open behind the defense. Seb nearly underthrew him, and Josh came back and made a great catch and took it into the house for a 36-yard touchdown score. There you go. Stoffel lines in the back, lines up in the backfield. Power I set. Hand off to Lupke. He's pushing. He's churning. Get in there, 44. He's in. Hunter Lupke for six. And a man's try by NDSU. The Bison have gone up by two possessions, two scores, leading 23 to 12. All right, let's take a look at our final game stats and the scoreboard brought to you by Nodak Insurance Company. You take a look at some of the numbers, Coach. I thought your defense again holding a team below 300 yards, a total offense, 291 on 66 plays, fifth time in seven games your guys have done that here this yep. uh, spring season. Well, that, that's good. Coach Braun and the, and the rest of the staff do a great job. Um, where there's a couple explosive plays that got behind uh, the one down here in this end zone that we're, we're set up in right now. You know, cover three, corner mm -hmm. as deep as the deepest, as wide as the widest, and unfortunately, we, but that's why we're gonna go back and practice next week and continue to get better. But they do a good job. They, we, we tackled pretty pretty well. I got a little frustrated with the number of times that uh, McElwain got out of the pocket, but we did get some pressure on him late in the game. Yep. Christian Watson, he was a playmaker in this game. He's our Nodak Insurance Company player of the game. The player of the game, presented by Nodak Insurance Company. We haven't really gotten a lot of chances uh, this year, you know, to return KORs. Um, Earlier in the game, they kicked it away from uh, away from me, like you know, like we have been getting these past two weeks. And you know, I finally get one that's kicked to me. We we uh, line up right with our guys up front, uh, get a field right return. Uh, and I wanted that one, so you know, I wasn't going to let that one go. I was kind of scared myself. I was like, I I cannot get caught. Uh, you know, I'm always I'm always you know playing with everyone. I'll I'll never get caught from behind. You know, I pride myself in speed. The player of the game, presented by Nodak Insurance Company. Well, Coach, when your team needed a boost yep. in the second quarter, Christian Watson came through, and he made a big catch on that long drive in the fourth quarter as well on third down. Yeah, that third down, that was a great throw by Zeb. Um, you know, with Christian, the, the thing we continually try to request of our players is our good players just need to be that. They need to be good. And you're seeing steady and consistent production from Christian. That's why we're trying to get him the football. When you're not being consistent in practice, then coaches don't trust you to get you the ball. And, and what we're seeing is a byproduct of being on time to meetings, paying attention to the details in the wide receiver room. And it's no surprise then that now you're seeing great play on the football field. Yep, just the fourth time in Bison football history, a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. That was Christian Watson here in this game today. Stay with us. More to come on the Bison football show. 
And welcome back to the Bison Football Show. A lot of connections between these two coaching staffs, Matt Entz, David Braun, both a part of Mark Farley's staff earlier in their careers. It's our Olaf Anderson feature story. Today's Bison Football feature story is presented by Olaf Anderson Construction. You know, as, as a young coach, this was, this was a place, this, this conference, specifically North Dakota State, was a place that I aspired to be at. And then all of a sudden going from watching games on ESPN or working camp in the Fargo Dome to being a participant in a game on the opposing sideline, I was like, man, this crowd noise, I mean, th this is no joke. You know, I'm responsible for getting the punt team together on third down and the place is going bananas. I mean, I can't track everyone down. Uh, it's, it's much more fun uh, on the home side of things, that's for sure. Missouri Valley football is known for its physicality, but you knew when you were playing the Bison it was just going to be at, at, at a different level. And, uh, you know, those practices post-Bison were, that, that, that Tuesday back on the grass was, I mean, we, we had to get going. You know, I mean, there, there was some wear and tear from those games. When it does turn into UNI week, um, there, there, there is a sense of nostalgia. There is memories that come flooding back. There is the memory of the first time that I had a coach in the Fargo Dome but I was on the opposing sideline. You know what that felt like. Uh, getting an opportunity this week to go back to Cedar Falls. You know, there's, there's awesome memories that, that our family shared with that staff, with those players in that community. And it'll be, it'll be unique to roll back into Cedar Falls and be back in the dome and be around a lot of familiar faces. You know, anytime you leave a, leave a program and, and especially when you, you depart for, for a conference opponent, you know, that, that, that can be that can be a tough transition, and, and, and the one thing that I do that I do appreciate is, you know, some of the friendships that I formed on that on that staff at you and I are, are are relationships and friendships that I'll hold you know near and dear for a long, long time. And and th there's relationships on that current roster that, when those guys are done, when they've graduated, I really look forward to to rekindling those relationships. It was a, a special group of of players, guys that uh, you know when they're not playing the Bison, you know I'm certainly rooting for. Today's Bison football feature story is presented by Olaf Anderson Construction. Thanks to Beth Hool for our Olaf Anderson feature story. A lot of connects here yep. for you. There's no question about that. A farm kid right outside of Waterloo. Right. You come back, you played your final high school football game here. Right. I know you have a lot of respect for Mark Farley and what he's done. I do. Uh, Mark gave me the opportunity to get into Division I football, get into FCS football. Uh, spent a number of years as a Division II defensive coordinator. He took a shot on a guy, local guy, who could recruit Minneapolis for him, could recruit Iowa. Um, you know, it, it, it was, it's a great place. It gave me the opportunity to work three, four years while my grandparents were still in town. And uh, I'll always be, you know, uh, appreciative of the opportunity. But, you know, then Coach Braun was here. I remember making a phone call to Mark uh, when David was at U University of Cal Davis and said, Coach, Midwest guy trying to get back, GA'd for me, coached with me. Uh, you're going to appreciate his work ethic. You're going to like what he does. And Dave had a great a career here. And the other piece is uh, Coach Vokalek, their linebacker coach. I GA'd for him at Wayne State College. Oh, and yeah. so uh, it, coaching's a, a small fraternity. Uh, we're all connected, you know, a couple, couple ways. But, uh, uh, and that's what makes this game against the Panthers so enticing. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's what I mean, FCS football's about. Yeah. is this rivalry and, and, and the connection here that we have and both programs have great respect for each other and uh, the way it's supposed to be. Yep, good stuff there. Gray Zabel, we've talked a lot about that young man. Pierre, South Dakota, our Peterson Farm Seed future crop of bison. The future crop of bison, presented by Peterson Farms Seed. I kind of find myself in the weight room quite a bit and the transformation my body had to go through to be a Division One offensive lineman would, was a huge step for me. And Coach Kramer was there every step of the way and helped me, helped shape me into who I am today. It's fun to get in the weight room, get to get to work with them, and they change your body over time. And just they do it the right way. Uh, small pounds every week, and then just that builds up. And after months of weightlifting, it's just wow, your body has really taken off. You definitely don't realize the changes right away and then a couple months later you look back at a picture of yourself and you're like, alrighty, that was 20 pounds ago and I look a lot different nowadays. They do an awesome job with the speed and agility side of it, not just the weightlifting, but keeping you fit, keeping you active, 
make sure you kind of have that quick twitch off the ball. And they just do an all-around awesome job with you. And they definitely know what they're doing. They, uh, they definitely have the track record. They have the resume. So it's just kind of giving your body to them and letting them do their thing with you. The Future Crop of Bison, presented by Peterson Farms Seed. We've talked a lot about this young man, yep. Gray Zabel. He's done a lot of really good things already as a freshman. Oh, he has. He's, the way he's picked up the offense and uh, the physicality that he's playing with. Uh, he's not playing like a 19-year-old that's a true freshman. He's playing like a vet. Um, Coach Larson has a lot to do with that. Coach Kramer, the, the physical development piece of it. Gray walked out right here. He doesn't look like a 19-year-old. And yes. it's funny to say that. You, you go A year ago, he was getting ready for Legion baseball. Yeah. And now he's playing Division One football. Put 40 pounds on his frame. Exactly. Yeah. And, and helping us win ball games. Yep, absolutely. Gray Zabel, great stuff there. We'll take one more break, come back. Big game next week, the Dakota marker and much more on the line. Stay tuned. They don't get much bigger than this. A big game next Saturday. South Dakota State in town. Rescheduled from the postponement. Yep. Ton on the line, Coach. I know you guys are going to be ready. Uh, there is. Uh, talk to the team right after the game. Everything that we talked about at the beginning of the year, before we started practice, is, is still available. And uh, as you know, our number one goal always is to be able to play for a Missouri Valley Football Conference Championship. And it just so happens that we're going to get that opportunity at home in the Fargo Dome next week. And uh, our guys will be ready. And I anticipate we'll have a great week of practice. Hope to see a COVID-packed Fargo Dome next week with the Dakota marker and much more on the line. Coach, great win today. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. I'll do it for us here on the Bison Football Show. Big thanks to Mike Downs and our producer and director, Beth Hool. For the head coach, Matt Entz, I'm Jeff Colhane. We'll see you next week in the Fargo Today's Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz has been presented by Gate City Bank and Pepsi. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.